Souls Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Osha and Isaya from The Acolyte. Now this is the first of the twin sisters that I have to review from this particular wave. We also have the May figure to review next but in this video we're going to be taking a look at Osha. So all that being said if you happen to enjoy the video hit the like button down below, subscribe if you're new and let's take a look at the packaging. All right, then, so here is the packaging. We've got the Acolyte there at the top with the racetrack design, Osha and Isaiah in the name pill. And they've gone for what I would describe as like a military green or army green for the name pill and the panel behind the figure. And it kind of matches the outfit as well. And as I said, military, I mean, this figure could really pass for a G.I. Joe figure rather than a Star Wars figure, but she seems to have quite a lot of accessories going on in there. She has that little handheld droid thing there, which I believes called Pip if I'm not mistaken let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong about that the Acolyte isn't really my favorite of the Disney Star Wars shows I've got to admit and Osha and her sister spoiler alert if you haven't seen the series end up kind of like switching sides but this version of Osha that we see here is from the first couple of episodes where she's like hanging around with the Jedi's I believe uh, but there's the back of the card VC 327 and you can see the figure there but i'm going to review this figure with an open mind and really from a figure standpoint how good the figure is rather than what media it's from because i said the acolyte really isn't my favorite show but there she is on the card back and you know as i say it, it's a good representation of the figure that we're getting all right then so here is osha out of the packaging and you can see there that she's holding her little droid there which she holds really well the hand is great for that no problem at all in her left hand. I've also got her blaster in the holster, which is a separate piece that goes over her head. And there you can see you've got the backpack as well, which has like a water bottle on it as well, which we'll take a closer look at all of the details in a second. But first of all, I just want to bring Soul in so you can just see the difference in scale for the figure. So he is a fair amount taller than her, which is great. Female character, a little bit shorter than the male character. Not always the case, of course, but it is kind of screen accurate, which is good. Now there's lots to like about this figure, especially if you're a customizer, I'm sure you could make lots of different characters out of this. As I said, it's quite a military uniform. She's got those like cargo trousers on. In fact, the lower half of her body could potentially be used for like an Endor rebel soldier or something, maybe a female version if you wanted one. You can see that she has this little pouch there. That's for the droid to go in, which we'll put that in in a second. So all in all, it's a pretty good looking figure. But we're now gonna take a closer up look at the head sculpt. All right then, so here is a close-up look at the head sculpt. And in terms of the face, I think they've done a pretty good job on the likeness there. I'm not 100% convinced about this hair piece. I mean, it looks okay, but I think they could have just put a few more different colors in there just to bring out some of the detail. It's all one color brown. And if you look at her in the show, she's got at least two types of different brown in there. So it just ends up looking not so great in my opinion. There's her blaster in her holster, as I mentioned before, which is a separate piece. We'll just take that off right now. So that just lifts off over her head. And we can see that there. It's not really designed for quick draw or anything. I think I've got the blaster in there correctly anyway. So you just take this piece out of the back there and then the blaster comes out. So you can see this tiny little blaster. I think this is the first time we've had one designed like that. So I think that's pretty unique. And that fits in her hand pretty well. You can see there. Here's a little droid, which again, I think is called Pip. And I'm really actually pleased that they've painted that quite well. You've got the orange on the blue there with some other paint applications some blacks. On the back, nothing at all. But I am really glad that they've actually painted the front of it because it does worry me with the vintage collection with things like this we've seen before accessories for like Hu Yang for example weren't painted at all so it's nice to see that that one has been painted and when that slots into that pouch there that looks pretty cool there the backpack is detailed pretty nicely as well you can see some sculpting work going on there and also you have that water bottle strapped to the outside as well and the straps are of a soft vinyl plastic so they're going to go over her arms really well so we'll just put her arm through we'll just put the other one through as well You just have to bend the elbow to get that on there and there it is on her back so that looks pretty cool as well 
So as I said, yeah, quite a military looking figure. It could be mistaken for a GI Joe. And in terms of the detail of the sculpt, I mean, you know, these new figures for the vintage collection, regardless of what media they're from, are always pretty well made. She's got some nice sculpting work going on on her gilet there. And that is also removable if you wanted to take that off. And there you can see what the figure looks like underneath there. There you can see all those sculpted in pouches on her trousers. And she even has steel toe cap boots, which is pretty cool. In terms of the articulation, of course, the head is on a double barbell. Plenty of range of motion, but the hairpiece does get in the way a little bit if you try and tip the head too far back. She has the ball hinge shoulders. She has hinges at the elbows, which are really good, actually. They go past 90. Of course, no hinges at the wrist because it's a female character and they don't seem to do that anymore. Now, we don't have an ab crunch. We only have a swivel at the waist. I mean, it does go around a little bit, but there's not a separate cut on the torso there. So kind of more of like a swivel. We have the barbell hips split at the thigh. Decent knee joint as well, and of course the rocker ankles as well. So all in all, pretty cool articulation for Osha here. And let's just get Pip. I think it's called Pip anyway. Let me know in the comments if I'm getting that wrong. I've said Pip all the way through this video, and I really should have you know, double-checked. <laughs> That's the correct name. Uh, but yeah, there's the holster for the blaster. And we'll just get her holding her blaster again in this hand. And here you can see you're able to get her in a kneeling pose pretty well. You know, as I said, articulation on these new figures is always very, very good. So happy to have her in the collection, especially if you are a customizer. I would imagine, as I said, that you might use parts of this figure for other figures, even if you're not into the Acolyte show. I think it's a good figure for custom fodder. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members. Your support is always very much appreciated. So thank you so much. Thanks for watching everybody and we shall see you on the next one.